Hi friends, it's Monica and today I'm going to be talking about intimidating books. So all the books in this video are books that have been on my TBR list for quite a while, either because I'm intimidated by like the premise or it's a genre I don't usually pick up, but there is a good mix of genres in this video. So let's just get right to it. My first pick is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. So this one is an adult contemporary and I do think it's quite popular since there is a TV show that's been released last year, I think. This book takes place in the suburbs known as Shaker Heights in Cleveland. I'm imagining it's like a typical American neighborhood but we are following two main characters. Our first main character is Elena Richardson, who does go by the playbook of being a proper suburban wife and mother. Although this past summer, her youngest, Isabel, has burnt down their house. Then we have Mia Warren, who is the newest arrival to Shaker Heights, and Mia rents a house from the Richardsons. Mia and her daughter Pearl quickly bond with the Richardsons and with their for Richardson children. Elena suspects that Mia has a secret to hide because Mia isn't a mother who is following the typical neighborhood rules. But when old family friends try to adopt a Chinese American baby, that's when Elena and Mia are on opposite sides and that's where I think tensions rise from there. From the synopsis of this book, it is something that I would want to pick up but i think one of the reasons why i didn't pick this one up for like the longest time it's because i tried to read celeste ng's previous book um everything i never told you and i could not make it past like 30 40 pages i think there was just something about the book that just turned me off so i didn't have that one but i think i will give it another shot one day if i do end up enjoying little fires everywhere and i think this book that i'm talking about I hope it has some elements of like, the TV show Desperate Housewives because they're both taking place in suburban settings so I think it would be really fun if it has more of that drama flavor that I think will be really fun to read about. But let's see how this one works out for me. Next we have a YA historical fiction, Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Grodin. So this is a book that I've heard quite frequently on booktube and some other social media sites but I think I'm I haven't picked it up since I've heard all the hype about it. I remember hearing tons of praise for it, but I guess I have my doubts. So from what I could tell, this book is about how if the Axis powers won World War II and how now the world is operating from that point on. So this takes place around a decade after World War II ended and simply just that first tidbit of this plot line is interesting and gripping but with the current world events it makes me not want to pick up this one as much since I, with books I want to have like suspension of disbelief and all that but I think it is an interesting plot. Another part of this plot is that there is a competition. There is an annual motorcycle race across Germany all the way to Japan and the protagonist Yale, I think is that how you say her name? is part of the resistance and she also survived a death camp. So Yale, she wants to win this race and ultimately kill Hitler. There's also a supernatural twist to this as well. Yale was part of the unsanctioned and really inhumane experiments that had gone on during the war that has granted her the ability to shapeshift into different people. So this is also where I'm hesitant to read this book because it's bringing on like the concept of human experimentation that has happened in history so um i don't know i'm just like a little bit hesitant to go into this one wolf by wolf does have that competition aspect that i really enjoy in books but overall i guess i'm just not in the mood right now to read this book so now this book is on my books that i hesitate to read i'm just gonna leave this one on my tbr for now next up we have bear time by frederick backman this is an another adult contemporary and my main reason to be intimidated by this one is because of the author. I haven't read any books from this author before and with new authors, I don't want to be disappointed with their books. So I think I typically go back to like authors I've read before. And with this particular author, I do hear a lot about his books on Bookstagram and he's really popular and his books receive a lot of good reviews. Taking place in Beartown, it's a small town that is surrounded by forest 
and the only saving grace for this community is its old ice rink. And the reason for that is because their junior ice hockey team is on their way to the semifinals of the nationals. All the hopes and dreams of this community is resting on the shoulders of teenage boys. However, the semifinal game will result in a young girl being traumatized and the town in turmoil. And this causes a domino effect affecting every Bear Town resident. So small town books are either a hit or miss for me and I do hope this one is a hit. The plot sounds super interesting seeing since Bear Town is a small town and a place where everyone knows each other so I think with any type of drama happening it will make a really good book but let's hope I get over my hesitancy to pick up this book and read more from this author overall. Anyways my next pick is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This one is an adult sci-fi novel which is a genre I do not typically pick up although I have read a lot more YA sci-fi books such as like Skyward, The Luminae Files, and Red Rising, which I think is categorized as adult, but I see it more as young adult. Dark Matter is one that I see a lot on Goodreads and previously recommended by a lot of like other booktubers I've watched before. And what first drew me to the book is the title, Dark Matter. It's just like intriguing to me, but I don't really know what it's much about. So let's go find out. We're following Jason Denson who is happy living his life in Chicago with his wife and son. But one night he's walking home and someone's knocking him unconscious. And the last thing he hears is, are you happy with your life? Which is so creepy. And Jason wakes up strapped to a gurney surrounded by strangers in hazmat suits and one guy says, welcome back. So in this new unknown world to him, Jason finds out he never married his wife or had his son and he's not a normal college physics professor but he's actually a genius who has discovered something that has changed his world. Okay, okay, so this premise sounds very good. Um, already one thing I'm predicting off the bat is that Jason is in like a Truman show type of scenario that the world around him is fake, but everyone knows it's fake except for Jason. I don't know, that's my prediction here. I think the thing that's most intimidating to me about this book is because it's a sci-fi, so with sci-fi is it can be either really boring or super entertaining for me. I haven't really ventured much into adult sci-fi, but I think Dark Matter will be a good read. So let's hope that is the case. So I do have a physical copy of this next book and it is The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. So this is a YA fantasy with elements of magical realism. I remember this one being described as a nightly traveling magical circus that appears randomly in places overnight and it's only open at night hence the night circus and it just appears out of nowhere with no previous like promotions or ads and it then disappears the following morning so the one thing about this book is i think it has atmospheric and like whimsical writing and that's what's hesitating me to pick this one up. With these types of books, it's either very immersive for me or like the writing just distracts from what's going on in the book for me and I hope that's not the case for this one. There's also a competition element in this book and it's between two young magicians, Celia and Marco. But the thing is, they don't know that only one of them will walk away from this competition and they're both in love with each other. So I do like the sound of like star-crossed lovers here. I do think I want to pick up another Aaron Morgenstern book that has recently come out, I think in 2019 or 2020, The Starless Sea. So let's see if I really enjoy this one. And this one has been on my shelf for quite a while, but I do think it will be fun to read this one. This next book is from a genre I, I rarely pick up as well, are classics. And this one that I'm going to be talking about is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. So this is a classic that has been on my list for years and years and years, but with classics, there's just so many books a little time. That's what I'm going to say about classics. The plot of this one is about a man who has been wrongfully imprisoned and on the aisle that he's being kept on, he discovers that there's a great treasure hoard that's being hidden on the aisle and he is determined to escape and find the treasure and get revenge against the men who has wrongfully imprisoned him. So this entire premise sounds really great, but it's been written in the 1800s. It was originally written in French as well, so I will be reading an English translated version 
as well as I think this book is like over a thousand pages long. One of the main reasons why I don't even read classics is because I just tend to be drawn more to newer releases and I'm not that type of person to pick up a classic and I think I'm just more I'm more used to like the writing style of modern day books so maybe that's also one of the reasons why I don't go back and like pick up a classic but I really want to. So my last intimidating book I have on this list is The Orange of the Priory Tree by Samantha Shannon. This is a standalone adult fantasy. I'm not one for huge fantasy books that are standalones and specifically standalones, especially in the case of this one, because I've heard that there are multiple characters and multiple kingdoms as well. And with such an in-depth fantasy world, I do like to spend more time with the characters and in the world itself. So I do typically gravitate towards fantasy series instead of standalone. So I think that's one of the reasons why I didn't really want to pick up this one. But I do like the sound of dragons in fantasy worlds. I don't think we see much of them. And there's also like assassins, multiple kingdoms, and magic in this one. I won't really describe the book in detail because like I said, there's multiple plot lines and a character. So I think one of the issues that I don't want to have to face in this one is that there might be a lack of character development and also the pacing might be off which are really important elements to me while i read but again i do hope this one will be a great one if i eventually get to every single book that i mentioned on this list so that's going to be today's video thank you so much for watching don't forget to give me a big huge thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below and don't forget to ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads i'll see you all soon